it's really important to dwell for a moment on what Apple looked like in 1997 when Steve Jobs returned to the company. I've found that it's difficult emotionally for us in 2012 to relate to the fact that in 1997, Apple was essentially a broken company. It was 90 days from insolvency, meaning that it was in serious danger of running out of cash. Uh, it was losing money. This was the year that Apple fired Gil Emilio, the year that Steve Jobs eventually became interim CEO, the year that Microsoft made what was for Apple a humiliating $150 million investment in the company. A bit of history there. For Apple, it was some cash and a promise by Microsoft to continue uh, making uh, uh, Office for the Mac, which was critical for, for uh, Apple. If Microsoft didn't make Office, uh, it, would, it would make the Mac far less valuable for people who needed Office. And for Microsoft, it was important, too, to keep the antitrust regulators at bay. Had Apple gone out of business, which was a very real possibility in 97, it wouldn't have been good uh, at all for, for Microsoft. So what else characterized the Apple that Steve Jobs returned to in 1997? He'd been gone for 11 years. It was a bloated company. He would go on to fire about 4,000 middle managers. It had far too many products, and keep that in mind because getting rid of those products, simplifying, is perhaps the core, uh, the essential uh, tenet of what Apple is all about. Apple at the time made a digital camera ahead of its time. It had multiple uh, computers and uh, printers and the, uh, the ill-fated Newton handheld, handheld organizer. Jobs uh, got rid of, in addition to those, to those people, all of those products and pared the company down to essentially four computers, two laptops, two desktops. Uh, the next year he hired a, a, an unknown supply chain executive named Tim Cook to fix Apple's uh, extremely dysfunctional uh, system of factories and warehouses. Cook closed them and he, he emulated the model of the company that at the time was hands down the best at managing their factories in the world and that was Dell. And Dell did that with contract manufacturers primarily in Asia, primarily in China. And all Cook did, I shouldn't say all he did, what Cook did was copy Dell's model of using contract manufacturers in China. So to fast forward to today, to, to flick on a topic that I don't dwell on, which is Apple's, uh, Apple's labor rights, labor, labor conditions at, the, at Foxconn factories in, in China. This is a direct result of what Tim Cook did in 1998 by closing Apple's factories uh, and warehouses that, had, that it had owned. Had owned. The, the most important cultural thing that Steve Jobs did upon returning to the company in 1997 was to realize that Apple had become a, a fractionalized divisionalized company of fiefdoms. Jobs decided that there would be no more fiefdoms at Apple. There would be one fief, and he would be the feudal lord. He wanted one Apple, one company, one brand, one way of communicating about the company. He wanted to do away with this notion that's very popular everywhere else in, in the corporate world up to today of the general manager. He did not want people running a business. He wanted people building products. He wanted people functionally oriented, doing what it was that they do well. And he was going to orchestrate all of that, not have them orchestrate little pieces uh, uh, of it. An example, at the time there were 16 advertising budgets at Apple. Jobs said from now on there's going to be one advertising budget. And if your product, uh, if you think that your product deserves advertising support, then you come to me and you ask for it, and I'll decide whether or not we're going to ad we're going to ad uh, commit ad commit dollars to advertise your product. An important point: this was not about cost cutting. Over the next few years, Apple's advertising spend rose. It rose dramatically, as a matter of fact. It rose even more dramatically as a percentage of revenue. So as, if you think 97, heading into 2000, 2001, there was a, there was a recession in, in the United States. Apple actually lost money for a period of time after regaining profitability, but its advertising spiked. Why? Because he was making a long-term investment in the brand that we all know and love and feel very strongly about today.